Hello and welcome to this reality check exclusive from Sri Lanka. Now, Sri Lanka has survived a bloody civil war but finds itself in the middle of a crisis of a different kind, a political crisis of the kind that it has rarely witnessed in its modern history. The Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, Ranil Vikramasinghe, ousted by his own president, President Sirisena. But the Prime Minister refusing to leave his Temple Trees residence. This is the iconic home, which has been the home of the Prime Ministers of this country. And Ranil Vikramasinghe is refusing to budge. He says, I am still the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, creating a deadlock. How is it going to be resolved? And what is behind it? What should India's concerns be? And was there, as the President even once seemed to suggest, the Indian hand behind a plot to assassinate him? Find out in the next 30 minutes as we talk to key players in the Sri Lankan conflict, starting with Prime Minister, or rather deposed Prime Minister, Ranil Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for joining us on NDTV for this exclusive. Now, this is quite a situation we have here that you have been removed as Prime Minister, but I'm still talking to you from the Prime Minister's residence. You've not left. Why is that? I am the Prime Minister. According to the Constitution, the person who commands the confidence of Parliament mm. is the Prime Minister. If the Prime Minister loses a flow test in Parliament, right. then he ceases to be Prime Minister, and the President must appoint a new Prime Minister. So as we speak, as of today, you are the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka? Yes, I command the confidence of Parliament. And unless I fail a flow test, mm. I continue to be Prime Minister. What about Mr. Rajapaksa then? Because he's been appointed Prime Minister by Mr. Sirisena. Yes, I saw that he was also been appointed Prime Minister. Yes. So, so. you have all what, he, the has, what has happened hmm. is there is a constitutional crisis. Okay. And that constitutional crisis has led to a political crisis. Where effectively it seems that Sri Lanka as we speak has two Prime Ministers. Actually, Sri Lanka at the moment is, uh, has no government. No one knows what the legal situation is. This is why we say go back to parliament and determine. Right. But it's interesting that you've chosen to stay on at Temple Trees. Is this almost a sign of resistance? Well, I came here on Friday night when I heard a second person has been thrown into the post of prime minister when it was not vacant. Hmm. We had a discussion with all our senior members, ministers. Right. And then we decided that uh, we will mobilize public opinion. Mm. This was done because uh, the weekend right. came in and mm. they thought that they could basically get things done over the weekend. Mm. Uh, but on uh, Saturday morning, right. I found people were coming in here and they were regarding this as the symbol of legitimacy, of constitutional legitimacy. So this has become a symbol of legitimacy. The house, the, the, the residence. The house, and I think that gave time for everyone to organize themselves, for the other parties, for civil movement, all to issue their statements. Right. And the big rally we had, hmm. uh, sort of with the culmination of that exercise. Now, you know, the world is still trying to make sense, Mr. Vikramasinghe, of what exactly has happened here. Why has this happened? The president claims that the main trigger was that there was a plot to assassinate him involving someone in his own cabinet. That's why he had to sack you. To yeah. that you say what? Firstly, there was a statement made by one individual who mm. had worked also in the president's secretariat. Right. Who claimed that there was a dispute between senior police officers, mm. which was well known, and there was an attempt to assassinate both president and the former secretary of defense, Mr. Gotabe Rajapaksa. Right. Uh, I inform the police, mm. have a full investigation and keep the president informed. Right. Uh, so he could uh, decide what should be done. Right. I just gave the same instruction to the Minister of Law and Order. Mm. To my knowledge, the CID has kept the president informed. Okay. I didn't intervene. At no stage did the president tell me mm. that there was a minister involved. Except one day at the last meeting of cabinet. He made a reference without saying a minister. Okay. But uh, he was he had me about his uh, plot to assassinate him. Hmm. At no stage did he tell me or anyone else right. that there was a minister involved. If there was evidence, 
I asked the police and yes. the police told me there is no evidence against any minister. Oh, yes, I see. So the police the, are saying that the, this claim that there was a minister involved in the plot to kill the president, there is yes, no evidence. There is no evidence. So if he had some evidence, he should have told me or the cabinet. So are you suggesting that this is an excuse that has been made up by him? Well, to if he says there is evidence, I have not given any evidence, so I think it's an excuse. An allegation was made about a plot to kill him. Yes. It didn't say that there was a minister involved. Okay. Subsequently, only that person had made an allegation right. saying a minister was involved. Hmm. But the police told me there is no evidence about a minister being involved. Okay, so then why do you think this has happened? What has triggered it? Well, that's the difficulty because the uh, president himself was talking with former president Mahinda Rajapaksha the last few weeks hmm. of the party getting together hmm. and of backing him to be presidential candidate. Right. So this must have been a part of that deal. I see. Because Mr. Rajapaksa cannot become a presidential candidate. Hmm. So this would have been the way they cut the deal. The cut the deal, that what happens? Mr. Rajapaksa becomes prime minister. And the president will become the candidate at the next election. Oh, in the next election. Presidential election. This is the, this is the real reason you think? But that's what a lot of people believe it to be. Well, one of the things that we also heard in this business about the plot to kill him, which you must have also seen, were newspaper reports suggesting that India's spy agency, RAW, hmm. was somehow behind this plot. There were some insinuations that effect also that India was behind it. So at one time it's India, one time it's uh, a minister in the cabinet. So hmm. we have to decide who's behind it actually. But did the president actually insinuate the India angle? There was an insinuation. He did. And that's, that's, that's the ways that many members of the cabinet had construed it. I see. Were you present in the cabinet yes. when he made that insinuation? Yes. And so you heard him say that? He made a statement which could have been construed that way. I see. But of course, subsequently, the government has come out and clarified hmm. that that was a incorrect and that India had no role to play. India has also come out and, and completely denied it. May have been made in the heat of the moment, you know, people say various things in the heat of the moment. Okay. But it was just to understand, because to viewers back in India, that as far as the Sri Lankan government is concerned, yeah, they, they don't, not, they don't the take... The government of Sri Lanka doesn't think there uh, has a, uh, says that there was no involvement by the, by the Indian government, that is the position of the government of Sri Lanka. Okay. Mr. Vikramasinghe, there's another India connection, which some say also has been behind this conflict which is to do with the development of the Sri Lanka, the Colombo port, a certain part of the port, what is called the eastern part of it. And I believe it was your case that that should be developed with the help of India and the president felt otherwise. There was a proposal in 2016 hmm. that this be done as a public-private partnership. Right. Uh, since we had to bear the burden also of the Hambantota Harbour, mm. uh, that we should go for a public-private partnership. Right. Uh, ADB was of the same view. Mm. That's how it started. And then there was also a proposal that India should uh, have a, Indian company should be, have a stake. I, the, I got cabinet approval mm. to sign a memorandum of understanding, yes. which included uh, about the East Terminal. Mm. Uh, uh, once the cabinet approved the MOU, mm. it was uh, then taken to India and was signed between the two ministers. All right. Uh, so, so that is the, the cabinet decision is there. And uh, was there the, a dispute? The matter, the matter had also been discussed earlier yes. between Prime Minister Modi and President Sirisena. Right. Uh, when I went there, the Indian government stated its views mm. but said that all, all discussions have to take place within the framework mm. of the memorandum understanding between the two governments right. and cannot be done unilaterally. Right. So I conveyed that and suggested that talks begin uh, between the but, two governments. Okay, but did that lead as, as reports have suggested to an altercation between you and the president no, on who should develop the port. No, you were, saying yeah. India and he said... No, all, all I said, there were different opinion in the cabinet was uh, papers proposed. Right. All I said was, just put this back till I go to India, talk to them and come back. Okay. But, you know, the other aspect of this which the world and certainly India is watching very keenly, Mr. Vikramasinghe, is the concern that once again, the advent of Mr. Rajapaksa hmm. could see... Sri Lanka tilting towards China. 
this allegation that in fact there is a proximity there and that this alters the balance of power. Well, is that a, is I that a legitimate you, concern? No, as I told you, firstly, uh, I am the Prime Minister. Yes. Until I fail a flow test or elections are held. Okay. So, uh, the question of policy is changing, do not occur. All right. Hmm. But is there, a, is there a legitimate concern on the part of those who believe that this attempt by Mr. Rajapaksa to rest power also is somewhere influenced by geopolitics, particularly the China factor? No, there has been concerns expressed always about uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa's foreign policy. Hmm. So, those concerns may be there yet. Okay. I mean, we, if you look at the reactions around the world, hmm. now India has come out with a statement hmm. saying that they hope that democracy will be respected. Hmm. Do you believe that that is enough? Actually, the, what we want is democracy respected and some countries have gone further hmm. and said uh, the constitutional process must be carried on. I saw India had also made some reference. Yes. And uh, finally, uh, some of the countries have gone further and said, well, there must be a parliamentary flow test. Yes, that's true. I think some of the Western countries have come out yeah. uh, strongly. If you, if, you, if you follow the uh, constitutional process, there has to be a flow test. Right. Mm. But has India been in touch with you after the coup? Yes, the High Commissioner met me. I see. And what was the nature of those discussions? He had a full discussion on this and their position that the constitution has to be respected and the constitutional procedures followed. Oh, so they've said clearly that the constitutional procedures should be followed. Do you feel that largely the global community is behind you? Global community is behind democracy. Global community is behind democracy? Democracy. I'm also behind democracy. Okay, but, the, but one report said that the Chinese ambassador conveyed to Mr. Rajapaksa that the Chinese high command has welcomed him as prime minister. I do not know what the Chinese ambassador told Mr. Rajapaksa. The Chinese ambassador came here. Hmm. He met me, he won't know the details. He okay. said he's meeting Mr. Rajapaksa also to find out the details. Hmm. Because China wants to know what is happening in Sri Lanka. Can I ask you a direct question? Is there some sort of Chinese hand behind what has happened here? No, I have not seen a Chinese hand. You don't see no, that at all? No. You see this very much as a part of a deal you're saying yes. between the they, president they started out as and Mr. Yes. Rajapaksa yes. for the re-entry of Mr. Rajapaksa and Mr. Sirisena to once again contest that's his That's what I would say. You think that's, that's all it is. But can I ask you this, sir, that, you know, one of the things that we've been hearing since we've come huh. is that while certainly there is some public unrest huh. at the fact that, you know, you have been deposed and there's been this coup, huh. the fact is that your government came on the promise that you would be going after the Rajapaksas. There were allegations of corruption, huh. there were allegations of human rights violation, and that simply not happened. There are cases filed against the members of the previous regime. Hmm. We can't go and hang people. Hmm. We have a procedure where people have gone, have been taken before courts. Right. And the court process has also been changed so that there is a, the delay has been reduced by a few years. Right. <laughs> but when you say hang people, when you say due process, yeah. so far none of the Rajapaksas have faced any kind of charges or any allegations. I think there, are, there have been charges filed against some of them. Okay, but, but none of them have actually had to suffer the consequences of any of it. But the case is on. Trials take time. You're, you're denying the fact that this is some kind of a compromise? There are no compromise. There are cases filed, that's what I tell you. Okay. And there are cases going on. So that process will continue regardless? And that process is continuing, yes. But uh, Mr. Vikramasinghe, I mean, where, do, where does Sri Lanka now go from here? Because the latest news that's come in is that parliament is going to be convened. Yes, so that's a victory for us. We wanted parliament reconvened. Hmm. But let's de determine the issue in parliament. That's all I say. So will there now be a flaw test? And there has so to be when? a flaw test. Yeah, you can't there has to be a flaw test. Yeah, you can't avoid a flaw test. And if that happens, do you have the numbers? I have the numbers. So if you could just, because for the benefit of viewers in India, hmm. recap what the numbers are. The strength of the, uh, of yeah, the, the Sri Lankan parliament is, is 225. Yeah, requirement is 113. I have more than 113. You have more than 113. We have more than 113 for the restoration of the status quo. Okay. But the other side claims that they are in touch with some of your MPs. Is that yeah, true? Yeah. Oh, yes. When I was there, they rang one MP and offered that member of parliament money to cross over. And the member of my parliament's... Uh, in front of you? 
No, when they were on the telephone, they didn't know the members in front of me, speaking with me. Right. Yeah, even other times when we are having discussions, we see calls coming into them. Hmm. And each one said, well, I offered 150 I was million, I was offered... 150 million, million what? Yeah. Rupees. Rupees, yeah. okay. Someone is, the other one, once when one of my members were offered 250 million, he just laughed and said, why don't you make it 400 million? So, <laughs> they said, we consider it. So they are offering anywhere between 150 million to yeah, 400 yeah. million yes. Sri Lankan rupees. Yes. Oh, well, he was joking about 400 million, but 150 million, 150 million more, more is more approximately less. a million dollars? Mm, yeah, about a million. About a million dollars. Mm. So who made that offer? Different members of their um, party. Of Mr. Rajapaksa's party? Or the government, yes, or the president's group. Of the yes. president's group. Ministries are offered. Are, are any of them tempted to cross over? The ones who have spoken to me have not been tempted. Okay, but are you worried that some of them may no, break we, ranks, we, in which case you fall short? I, our members are holding together, I think. Yeah. They are holding together. Where is so much money coming from? In your well, view? I don't know whether they have all that money, though they promise. Otherwise, it's some money that they have. You can just imagine. But Mr. Vikram Singh... We have to keep up with India, no? <laughs> in <the> prices. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. But where do you think that this process is going to lead? Do you seriously think that they will allow this floor test to be once conducted? Have, once there's parliament, you have to allow a floor test to be conducted. The result of parliament, we recall, is because the people wanted it. And they'll have to go in for a floor test. Okay. But when otherwise the floor test is to be held... I, I, Otherwise, they won't be running after members of parliament. Right. That's the only but, positive sign of it. Okay, but when the floor test is to be held, how would it actually work? Because is it going to be your vote of confidence or will it be Mr. We, Rajapaksa's we, we, vote we, of confidence? We, we, we'll have to work a, a strategy out. We are talking with everyone, all the other parties in parliament okay. as to what should be done here. First was to get, ensure parliament is uh, reconvened. We've achieved that now. Okay. No, but uh, just hmm. technically though, hmm. they are claiming hmm. that Mr. Rajapaksa is the prime minister. Hmm. And so the floor test will be conducted under him as his vote of confidence. We, we, we'll look at that. We, we, we have many options. We studied them. Okay. Is this something that can be judicially challenged? No. Under Sri Lankan law? No. There's no scope of judicial challenge. The only hope is to do it in the floor of parliament. Suppose they don't agree to your terms. Uh, what are you going to do? Are you going to continue to There to, will be a float. There will be a, uh, there, there, guns, you'll remain in e temple e trees. Even they have accepted the fact that there's going to be a float test. Hmm. It's only this, what they state uh, is it has to be on Mr. Rajapaksa. Right. Uh, so that means the, the concept of a float test they have accepted. Okay. It's only negotiating how the float test is to be conducted. Okay. <laughs> Let me just conclude as we wind out of time. <laughs> on where all of this leaves Sri Lanka with regards to its neighborhood. Because again, as I said, this is something that's being watched very closely by the subcontinent, by the neighborhood. Where does this leave us with that dynamic? What should, should India be concerned about what's happening here? Do you think, what would you like to see India well, do more? Neighbor, neighborhood is concerned because Sri Lanka and India have been the two practicing democracies. Right. We should not have a crisis of this nature. Hmm. And restoring democracy is our first task. I think everyone in the neighborhood agrees with that. Okay. And any help that is given, any uh, support to restore democracy, uh, to restore the parliamentary supremacy is uh, what is required. I see. So that help would be welcome at welcome, this stage. Welcome, certainly. <laughs> Have you got any indication, because you said that you did meet uh, the Indian uh, envoy, did you get a sense that that help or that intervention was in the pipeline? Well, the, we, I, we uh, understood whenever a country says the constitutional process has to be hmm. followed. Yes. That means you have to have a parliamentary floor test. Oh, I see. So you're seeing, you're reading it in those yes, terms. Yes. So by when do you think, realistically, you will be back as Prime Minister, if at all? Well, I'm here in the office. Okay. The floor test must be held next week. But they have taken away all the, your, your staff, your powers. All of that, as, at the moment at least. Does no, that, does that of, concern you? Part of my staff is here, here. Part of your staff is here, but like when we walked in, I've been to temple trees before. Yeah. I've never managed to enter so easily. I know. I mean, the there were so many some layers of security. Of security has been ordered out here. Does that in any way worry you? No, I don't. You, it doesn't worry you the least. Okay. Mr. Vikramasinghe, thank you very much indeed for talking to us, and uh, we wish you all the best thank in your battles. Joining me, 
live and exclusive from Colombo is Namal Rajapaksa, the son of Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa. Thanks very much, Namal, for joining us. Thank you very much. When I say that your father is Prime Minister, Ranil Vikrama Singh says he's the Prime Minister. Well, so who course. is the real Prime Minister? Of so the Sri President Lanka. has appointed President Rajapaksa as a Prime Minister according to the powers he has hmm. vested under him under the Constitution. Right. And we understand the Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Ranil Vikrama Singh's point because uh, he has to hold on to the party. The time he says he but is he not the says, Prime Minister. But Namal, he says that this entire move is illegal. See, he, he says it to hang on to the uh, hang on to the uh, political party of his own. But mm. if you look at what he has done in 2015, mm. the same thing, right? The president has the powers from the constitution yeah. to appoint, dissolve the cabinet, and right. the president has decided to dissolve the cabinet and right. appoint a new cabinet. So, new cabinet includes the prime minister with him as well. It's a it's a serious allegation, and it's a serious investigation, a plot to assassinate a head of state. But I'm sure what mattered for President Sirisen, not, not only that, but there are many other reasons. What are those? Try to explain that to us because many see this mm -hmm. as just simply a way for the Rajapaksas, your father, to enter through the back door. Well, see, we never entered through the back door. Okay. It was President Sirisena's invitation and the wish and the discussion between two leaders mm. as to what they should do next to stable the economy and the political, bring back the political, economic, and social stability to the country for the next couple of months. But and how, long had these, the how long had these talks been going on? Well, as far as we know, it's, it's, it goes back to four or five months. But what about the charges mm -hmm. about the proximity between China and the Rajapaksas? I mean, you saw that New York Times article. See. That alleged that millions of dollars of Chinese money mm -hmm. was used to fund your father's campaign. They had to prove it. This, these allegations were made during the campaign. Even now, even today, mm. Mr. Vikram Singh's camp is now still again saying it, it, is, it is Chinese funds that are, that's going to topple them. Yes. So if they want to get the help of the region, you know, they should not bring the entire uh, political... You're saying you know, China has politics. no hand behind this coup? Nothing. Not, this is not a coup. This is a constitutional change. Okay. You're I must calling, iterate, reiterate you're that. You're saying it's a constitutional change? It's a constitutional Rana right exercised by the president. The, according to the rights he has. I want to ask you about India because India is worried yeah. that the return of Mr. Rajapaksa <laughs> will lead to a pro-China tilt once again in Sri Lanka. No, India, has, India has nothing to worry. We do know in the past there was a mis misperception or misunderstanding mm -hmm. with the Indian and Sri Lanka between my father's government. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the agreements that Honorable Vikram Singh got into with certain countries, it's far worse than getting them to invest in your country, right? Mm -hmm. So at that time, where was India? Did India question Honorable Prime Minister at that time? Why did you get into this agreement? So you're saying India should not be worried about what's India shouldn't there? be worried. About I the must, return I, of Mr. Rajapaksa? India shouldn't be worried at all. India should be a developing partner for us. India has been very closely working with my father during the war. India helped us to defeat terrorism. And we fought India's war. Prabhakar and assassinated Rajiv Gandhi. We all know that. So we fought not only our war. We bought peace for the region. My father bought okay, peace you are saying for the region. You're saying we fought India's war. But what about Ranil Vikramasinghe when he mm -hmm. says that your father, the president, are offering millions of dollars to his MPs? To he bring has to say over? that. He has to say that. Otherwise, how is he going to hold on to his ministers? They are all coming in numbers. They are all living in numbers. They're saying they're, uh, we spoke to them. They're saying they're mm -hmm. receiving phone calls. You know, come no, 150 million Sri Of Lankan course, they, we haven't offered a single rupee for any of his members. But where, do you, where will you get the numbers then? We do have the numbers. You are about 30, 35 short. You only have 95 as per the math. You have, have numbers. numbers. There are people there who are waiting to support you. See, that if you, if you look at... on the floor of the house. Let me ask you about Namal Rajapaksa now. <laughs> you have so far been an MP, but is this move partly to ensure the next generation of Rajapaksa taking over? No, this political decision was taken before this happened. Let me let me explain this. Honorable Ranveer Vikraman Singh said himself, hmm. stayed in political stage. President Rajapaksa never wants to take over the government hmm. because he wants to wait till Namal becomes 35 to hand it over to him. Okay. But now he's saying he made this move to move for me. How old is how old are you right now? I'm 32. 32. So three more years to go. Constitutionally three more years. But that's not that's not the question here. My question is Honorable Vikram Singh has said one thing before and he changed his entire story now. But I must reiterate this. We took this decision purely based on national interest you to are bring back political, economic and social stability to the country. Are you on track to become Prime Minister? Well, it's, it's all up to my people here, right? If, if someone believes yeah, that you can become the Prime Minister when you are 32, it's a dream. But my destiny will take where I am. Do like, you think you're ready? Well, it's up to people, right? I mean, I'm still 32. How do you feel? 
Do I'm, you feel now, because you've now been an MP for quite a long time, mm -hmm. do you feel now you're ready? Well, it's all, all up to my people. And I'm still a member of parliament. So before get thinking about the prime minister or become head of state, there's a long way to go in politics. And politics is something that you cannot go and ask for things. You have right. to be with your people and you have to earn it. Okay. So let my people decide what, what do I, what, what should if I do. If the people decide, you're okay with it. So let my people decide that first. Okay, you're answering like a seasoned politician. <laughs> Namaste, Rajapaksa. Thank you. Pleasure to talk to you. Thanks Thank you very, very much. much.